Hello everyone. Today I have an adorable guest, Malika Taisumova Seymak. She is the young, successful woman who built her own personal brand, which helps her to be one of the best sellers for the luxury hair tools. She is mom of two lovely boys and the wife of football player. I'm happy to say that she is from my hometown, also Chechnya, and uh, she living in Holland. Today, she is ready to share with us about her success, beauty, and private life. Can I say it in Chechen? Do you feel now you have a special mission? Oh, yeah, do, yeah, do. It. Yeah, I know it's hard. I'm so calm here. You are very strong. Who is this a girl from Europe or something, you know? Yeah. How you handle it? I was really scared. Why you decided even to start it? I have a normal life. Hello, Malika. Tell us more about yourself, please. So, Are you live in Amsterdam or I made a mistake? No, I am not living in Amsterdam. I am living in the Netherlands. I grew up in Apeldoorn, that's a small city. And the last three years I was living in Deventer. How is that happened that you moved in that part of Europe? Because of the war with Russia. I think in 2001 we left from Chechnya. My mother left with me. And first we were in Dagestan, after in Kazakhstan, and after we moved to Holland because my brother was already living there. So my brother told my mother like, okay, you will, you will come to Europe because she wanted to go back to Chechnya. And he said, you will come to Europe or I will come to Chechnya and I will go in the war. So you have to choose, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's why we moved this to the Netherlands. Yeah. 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 How old were you? I was at that time when we moved to the Netherlands. I was around 11, 12, something mm -hmm. like this. So this is like uh, almost teenager age, right? Yes, right. So yeah. you saw the war. Yes, I saw the war. Yes, I remember everything of it. Yeah. It was really hard because when we moved out of the country, my mother became really sick and um, I had to care of my mother a lot, you know, she was in the hospital. It was also mentally uh, and hard. It was really hard for me because I had no one and I lost my father when I was young. And, you know, it was really hard because I was alone with my mother in a country that I even don't speak the language. So it was like uh, really hard for me in the beginning, like the three, four years when I was living there. Even if my brother was near to us, it was really hard. I wanted to go back to my family, to my friends, to my neighbor, you know, but Alhamdulillah, we Alhamdulillah. survived it, yes. So since you, you moved when you were 11, that means that uh, you started school uh, in Chechnya, right? No. Or you didn't start no, uh, because I, of the war? I didn't start the school in Chechnya because of the two wars, I think. Two wars, yeah. Yes. The first two one, wars, then yes. the break, I didn't then again. start the war, yes. I remember that I had some lessons at home because my mother was working a lot. Mm -hmm. And I had someone who was living in by us, like an au pair, you know. And she was, um, yeah, we, I had some online lessons, like home lessons, you mm -hmm. know. So I didn't go home to school. school. Yeah, I think maybe I go like three days or something to school. In Chechnya? I, yeah, something oh, like okay. this. I don't remember it anymore. But uh, no, I started the first time that I went to school, it was in the Netherlands. Yeah, it was like my officially first school. So when I moved to Holland, I remember I had to learn two years the language to start with A, B, C, like, you yeah, know, this yeah, kind of beginning. things. And after that, I had to give some tests and then they put me in a school and so i think i was around 13 14 something i think 13 something when i go to the first uh, grade grade yeah so that means that you were like the oldest from the childhood uh, from the children's which is no i think it was different in Ho it's like different than in russia i think they put me with the same uh, ah, age the same yes. ages yeah the okay. same ages it was really hard yeah because you I know they were understand. laughing all the time when i make mistakes yeah but it's okay now <laughs> now but I you can. passed it alhamdulillah yes now yeah. i can be proud of myself so yeah. is it was hard to learn this language what's the name of the language in dutch, Holland? dutch. In, in english okay, you say dutch, dutch yeah. yes uh, yes, it, it it was in the beginning really hard, but now it's my first language. I ah, think in okay. Dutch and we yeah. speak at home Dutch, you know, with my family, with my kids. So it's my first language and I really don't know how I learn it. I, I, I think it goes automatically, you know. Mm -hmm. I had to. I had to prove myself. I had to prove my mother, you know, like I can yeah. do this.
So yeah. your mother also learned it? Yes, my mother learned it also. Mm-hmm. Now I can see from who you got this strongness and power inside you because you're speaking about your mom and I can feel that because the step that she did, she moved yeah. from her hometown in the war, at a scary moment, she moved to the Europe. Like, I wouldn't do that now, for example. That's the great step. Yes, really. It's a really, you know, when I was younger, I didn't understand it. But now I have kids. And now also with, you know, Palestine and all these things happens in the world. Also with the war, you know, other wars. I'm thinking, what now if there will be a war now here? What will I, how can I move with my kids without no one, you know? How how did my mother do this? I, I really don't understand. I think that's the instinct of yes. the protection of the kids, kids. and yourself. Yeah. So at that time, women usually, they don't think. Yeah. They just do. Yes, you're the right. The things which is the best. Yeah. It's like survive. I have a lot of respect for those people who did this, you know. I want to ask, uh, when your mom took you yeah. and take you to the Europe, um, I know that in in my culture and your culture, it's um, kind of not allowed to take uh, the kids from the dad side, yeah. especially for women. Can you share with us what your mom feel at that moment and how she went through this? I think when you are in the war, you know, and you have to run to survive, I think you are not thinking about, oh, wait, I have to ask for permission or something. I think, I think she did it just to survive, you know, also for me because I was really scared and I had, I don't know, remember exactly what it was, but I had something with my heart, you know, because of the war. And she was like, okay, I have to save my child. I do this for my child. And yeah, I think that's why she did it. Her mother, her own mother, my grandmother, Mm -hmm. she was against it because my mother was one of her favorite child, Uh I think. And she said all the time, like, oh, you have to come back after the war. And this was also what she wanted to do. She wanted Mm -hmm. to go back. I think everyone who moved, uh, even we, when we moved, uh, because we may have moved in the break between two yes. wars. Yes. And uh, my dad still sometimes saying, I will get back. <laughs> now yeah. they live here. My mother the Still, same. I will sometimes, get back. Yeah. Yeah. I say, why you don't go back? You know, I am married. I was the youngest one yeah, who yeah. had to marry. I said, I am married now almost for 10 years. Why you don't go back? She's like, no, I don't know. It's like now my second, like, like my second life, you know. Yeah. Everyone is here, my grandchild grandchildren are here yeah. so I don't go back. Yeah, how she can leave you yeah. guys. Because yeah, the um, everyone who saw the war, I think the life, it's like uh, between uh, two parts, yeah. before and after. Yes, for sure. And uh, you cannot really return back before. Yeah. And also the people and the country has changed. Of course. It's changed. The life, yes. The life, life everything changed a lot. Changed. But I think it will be good for her to go back. To be with her family, with brothers yeah, because and she sisters. Has a I think it would, but she doesn't want. Mm-hmm. And I respect that. You by yourself, how often are you coming back to Chechnya? I have to say, the last three, four years I didn't go. Mm-hmm. Normally I would go before I will come now to Dubai, but I couldn't go because I don't have the second passport. I don't know, it's like a Zagran passport. Second passport. Yes, the second passport. International passport. Yes, the international mm-hmm. one. I had to make this. And because I have the Dutch passport. Ah, okay. But you can travel by your Dutch passport, Yes, no? I traveled before, but they don't open now the visa for me because ah. of the war. Ah, because... They block it, you know. So because that's of, uh, why uh, yeah, I have to go from the... Yeah, from another side, ah. like... So uh, often... Before I was married... I went, I think, every two years, something like this, to Chechnya. I mm-hmm. went with my mother, you know, yeah. to see the family. After I married, now in nine years, maybe I go three times. Mm-hmm. But I think from this year, I want to go every year there. Inshallah. Inshallah, yeah. I'm trying to go every summer, yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's to good. To see the family. I know that you are married a football player. Can I ask you, how did you meet your husband? I met him because we have uh, same friends Mm -hmm. and he was not living far away from me. And uh, one of his team, not teammate, but one guy who was in the same club with him, 
he was uh, living in my neighbor. So he said to me, yes, I have really good guy for you, you like, like this, you know. So friends. friends introduction. Yes, we yeah. had the same friends, yeah. When was that? How old were you? Oh my God, I have to think back. I think I was 22. 22? Yeah, almost okay. 23 or yes, yes, 22. And now you are? 32. 32, oh. Yeah. So it's like 10 years. Yeah him in February and we married in October. He's Turkish and uh, you are from Chechnya as me and we both know that it's um, a bit uh, against our culture and the rules. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I know it's the hard topic but uh, if you allowed me to ask how did you went through this? In the beginning I was really scared even to tell my mom you know. To tell your mom that you want to get married or With, he proposed uh, yeah. Yeah another Nationality. Yes, and nationality. Yeah. It was really hard. Uh, I will keep it short because it's a long story. But um, till now, there are some family members who are not accepting it and who are not accepting me as a family anymore. And uh, but Alhamdulillah, I have also part that are really happy for me and support. Yes, yeah. supporting me. And in the beginning, it was really hard because I had a lot of fights in the family. And yeah, what can I say more about it? But I did it, you know, and now I can say I did it. Uh, even if I had a lot of fear, you know, I had so yeah. much fear. I, I was it's thinking maybe hard someone will kill me or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Alhamdulillah. Have you had this kind of accidents that people was insulting you? Oh my God, till now. Sending there you are some too bad many messages. people. Um, till now. Till now, they are sending me messages like, yeah, we will, uh, we will kill you or I will kill your kids and um, don't say you are from Chechnya, don't say that you are uh, married to Turkish man, he's not a man and things like this. It's really hard. That's but that's like why how I said from beginning you are very strong. Thank you. That's why you are my guest. Yeah. So when you get this kind of message, how are you going through this? How you handle it? Yeah, I know it's hard, but what you do to not, you know, fall down? You know, I, I will tell you one story. It was really hard. Uh, someone from Holland, one guy, I don't know, he was stalking me really long time. Yes, really long time. It was a boy from Chechnya and he write like, I know your address and he knew my address where I was living. He knew, uh, you know, my, my husband is playing football, so he know when he's playing and where, which city, which stadium and everything. Yes, and he tell, tells me every time, like, yeah, I was in the war in Syria, I don't care about anyone, and I will, I will kill you, this kind of things. Close your Instagram, close your YouTube, you are destroying our, our people, the things like this. And then, I don't know, I was so afraid. This was, I think, the worst time in my life, because he knew everything about me, what I am doing, you know? And then I went to the police. I said to the police, like, you know, this and the, I, I showed them all yeah, the Yeah, you messages. have to report the stalker. Yes, uh, and they catch him. They knew exactly who this guy was and everything. And after that, he stopped. I was really happy. But, but did you uh, know who's that guy? No, they didn't tell me. They didn't that? tell no, you till they, now? Yes, they told me only that he's 15 years old. 15 years. Yes, and he's living four years in Holland. That was correct and that he had a lot of problems also with police and for a lot of different things, you know, at school and things like this. I know that for girls who are from Chechnya, it's really hard, you know, to marry someone who is not from Chechnya. And I think I had a lot of fears, but I think I, I am sitting here and telling the story, you know, openly because I always thought by myself like you know I am Muslim Alhamdulillah and only Allah knows you know and I am doing nothing wrong with marrying another That's man who is also yeah. Muslim you know so I think this was my power I always thought like if something will happen to me today if someone will come to my home and kill me because I married to a Turkish man Alhamdulillah, you know, I did nothing wrong. If I will die today, I know this is not like mm -hmm. a mistake that I make. You know, it's yes. allowed to marry a Muslim yeah. man, you know. So for me, it was, this is like my religion, you know. This was like above my culture, mm -hmm. you know. And I think this is the thing that I was 
uh, this is the reason why I was always like strong with it. And yeah, I don't know why, but I always thought like, okay, if someone will do something to me, even if I lose my family who doesn't want to speak with me, if it's not like my mother, my brother and my yeah, sister, closest, it's okay yeah. for me. If you don't accept, accept it, you know, I did nothing wrong in the Islam, you know, and yeah. this is the most important thing. So you're saying about the relatives who did not accept that and uh, refusing that you are from their family, is that the relatives like um, uh, uncle's side, aunt's side, the cousins, right? Not the closest to you. Or are you talking about relatives which is very far from you? Yeah, I have some family members who are really close to me who are not talking to me. Uh, it's really hard because I was really good with them and I hope inshallah one day it will be again better, you know, because I love them. It's like my blood. But um, no, people from far from the family, I really don't care about it, really. I'm really hard with this kind of things. I know in by Wainach, you know, by our people, we say like, oh, can I say it in Chechen? Yes, you can say. Oh, yeah, do, yeah, do, ili, um, shame. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a shame, you know, like, oh, who agdutar, like, what will say the other mm, people? Yeah. The opinion, it's really important for us, like, what mm. the other people say about us. And I was like, you know, there is only one, two opinions are important for me. It's like from my brother, sister, and my mother, like my family, and from Allah, you know. Mm -hmm. This is the only thing that I care about. And this is what makes you stronger, I Yes, yeah. and I think also I grew up in a city where are not living so much Chechen people. So I was surrounded with girls and boys that are not from our country. So like Turkish, Moroccan, this, the, you know. And I think also I learned a lot from them. I grew up with them. I didn't grow up with Chechen people, you know? So it's not like um, when I go outside, when we, I'm with our friends, they didn't even understand my thoughts, you know? I was sometimes, I was like, oh, you can't do this as a woman. They were like, why? It's normal, you know? It's not against the religion. It's against your culture, maybe. That's another problem which we're facing, not only in our culture, in any cultures I see, because I live in Dubai and I see like uh, even, yeah, even Arabs, different nationalities, there is something which is from the culture and there is something which is from religion. And uh, even like we have this uh, phrases which people I hear see, uh, saying in Chechnya sometimes they saying something like um, even Arabs does that even Arabs do that I, I'm asking them like why you think that if they do that it's perfect because it has nothing to do with religion and there is so many things yes, like this yeah. yeah and unfortunately we also have uh, two two sides <laughs> yes we have and it's really hard sometimes yeah even yeah also when you grow up in Europe and you don't have Chechen people around you, you know, to be with, to hang out with. So like my sister, she's living in Belgium and her kids, they grow up with so many Chechen people. So they are more into it, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I think that's also one of the reasons maybe why I go just a little bit different than Maybe yes, maybe no. Yeah, I don't know. Because uh, I was in the, I, I, I am still in the Chechen society, but I still have my way. Yeah. You know, so even in Moscow, I study uh, with a lot of Chechen people. I, uh, but in Moscow, it's the big society. Yes. And it doesn't matter where we are, we always like inside the society. So, yeah. but still, yeah, I think this is something which is inside us. And we do not care about uh, <laughs> Erdu. Yeah. <laughs> This Maybe. phrase is always yeah. in my mind. Yes, I have, I have the same thoughts, yeah. really. Of course, I have. To, we have to be respectful to our family. It's important, yeah, but not, that's true. not to be like the same as others. I don't yeah. like that. Uh, what I realized, uh, because I have a strong society with the women entrepreneurs from everywhere, especially from the Caucasian people, in common, it's like this kind of woman and uh, which do not scare of what people is gonna say and that's how they get success that's how i feel even in entrepreneurship when she's not afraid that for example she's going to create this product it can be 
any any product like a cream for the face. She can create this product and uh, she's not afraid of the bad reviews. She's not afraid of, uh, oh, someone's going to talk about uh, her as her family and something like this. When she does not afraid, she's going very on top, yeah. very high. So I know you are married a football player, mm. as I mentioned before, and we talk about uh, him a b- little bit. And um, I want to ask you, as I know, the football players, they traveling very often. Yes. Um, how you handle it? You know, I think uh, because of the war and everything, I moved so many times in my mm-hmm. childhood. I didn't grow up in one home. Even in Holland, I moved maybe seven times, you know. Um, so I think for me, it's like normal in my life. But I know also a lot of other women who are married with football players. It's really hard for them, you know, for the people who grow up in one home to miss their family or to move to another street or to move to another country. They are like, I see a lot of fear, you know, like a lot of fear and a lot of women who are like crying or they are missing their family too much. I think for me, it was really easy. I don't know why I never had this fear to move, to travel. You saying that you get used to travel a lot, right? That's why you, you traveling with him and for you, it's very normal. But don't you get tired? Do you feel comfortable in that? And what about your kids? Good question at this moment, because now I am in Dubai to make a choice, you know, from the summer, because my husband, he changed the club two weeks ago. We are living now near to Istanbul, more near to Istanbul, but he moved now more to near to Izmir. So to take the kids again now from this school because we moved one and a half year ago to Turkey for an, for his career you know for his new club and now he moved to another club and now we are thinking like okay you know the oldest one is almost eight years and to change again the school for the kids is it okay or it's not okay every time they make new friends and then we have to move again it's hard you know when they were younger it was so easy and we knew that I knew that this time will come that mm-hmm. we have to make the decision when you and have to choose one when place. i have to choose one way you know to one live way, yes. and now i spoke with my husband and he said to me okay go to dubai you know try to find a house and everything because after his football career he wants to move to dubai mm-hmm. and he said i think it's better that you will start now the life in dubai and that the kids will go from now on from the summer from this year to one school So now in this time, I have to make a decision for the kids. But for me, if you are asking this for me, it's really hard to live uh, with distance, I think, mm-hmm. because we never had this. Yeah. And But for me to live in like new country or to move, no, I like it. Mm-hmm. I see it like a, like an experience. Adventure. Yes, <laughs> like this, you know, and I learn a lot of, uh, about it in the best yeah. so I think it's good to move to see different people to see different culture when I traveled uh, with my sister a lot when we started the business for the um, uh, personal shopping yeah we had we still have it and uh, when we started in 2013 uh, we had to travel a lot by ourselves yeah not like with a team not we uh, sending someone we traveled by ourselves but being honest from 2016 till 18 i uh, was uh, traveling and almost living in paris and uh, i realized that i want to move in one place and stay there okay that's how we moved to dubai yeah and um, for now if you tell me You're not gonna go anywhere, anywhere from UAE outside. Like for the two years, I will say, okay, I'm yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah, I love Dubai a lot. Okay. So I want to ask you, what do you feel about Dubai? That's a good question. <laughs> I think Dubai is nice, and I know a lot of people, or even my friends who moved here, and they like it too much. They say, oh my God, I had to do it earlier, you know, like before. But for me, Dubai, I think, yeah, I like Dubai. Only I don't like in the summer the weather ah, that's the so only it's hard day. for you to yes, keep the yes, yes. the heat you know normally in my but have you life. been here in the summer yes i was the last summer here two months two and months. it was i think we met at two yes, <laughs> that time yes, yeah yes okay yeah. i've been many times here like different seasons but mm-hmm. i think the summer it's really hard it was also really hard for my kids and my kids love dubai and in 
last summer they said, Mama, please, I want to go back to the Netherlands. I want to go back to Turkey. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. As I see, Dubai is the center of the world. Anyone is coming here. I mean, like from yeah. different countries, it's like yeah. uh, keeping stay in the center. Yeah. So usually the people like me who's living here a long time, at the summer we're leaving. We're going outside. Yes, I know. I saw yeah, it. this is vacation time. I saw it. Yes, yes. I saw so it. It's a lot not of the problem people are for going us. back to Europe as yes, well. Yes, yeah, it's not America, the problem. Yeah. Even if you stay here, when you have everyday routine, like your kids is going to go to the school. Yeah. You will have some stuff to do with the work yeah. and uh, your project. So you're not really um, feeling the heat because you going from one place to another place. You have your car with the AC. You have the studio with the AC. You have your home with the AC. And you do not really much feeling. Maybe because you used to come as a tourist still. You were seeing the difference because you want to go outside you want no, to the, walk in the no? summer we stay two months here and normally we stay in hotel you know mm -hmm. as tourists and this time we said okay we will stay here like like we are living here ah, you know? okay so we book an apartment uh -huh. and my mom uh, came over as well she make like food for us uh -huh, you know okay. so it was like normal but it was really bad time with the weather so ah, it was okay. really hard for the kids what are the special characteristics you can say about being a football player wife you have to have a lot of patience because uh, also with traveling i can't say like oh next week uh, i have a wedding in the family so you have to be there it it's not possible Mm -hmm. You know, he has like the winter stop and the summer stop that are the only times that we can travel as a family. Of course, sometimes he have like two, three days off sometimes. But even then I can't uh, book something or plan something because you don't know. Maybe by his last training, he gets something in his knee or somewhere in his body and he have to go to the physio, you know. So it's like also you are a lot of times alone because he's traveling a lot and I get it so you cannot really schedule like for example your vacation in this no, moment no, or never, something never till now I think in nine years I book my holiday the night before we go ah, sometimes okay. we are in the airplane we didn't even book the hotel with the kids are you more organized person who likes to organize the no at all no no, no not at all okay so you with good work, match with business <laughs> yes match, yeah. but with private life with traveling mm -hmm. and things, no. With the business, I'm really like oh, okay. straight, you know. Yeah. By the plans. Yes, because I work with a lot of people. But uh, with if it's with uh, family, like with private life, no, at all. I can't. Did we you take your family to Chechnya? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I took my oldest son Arda when he was six months old. I ah, really? traveled with him because my grandmother was sick. Mm. So, but if you ask him about, he was six months. He don't yeah, remember nothing. But her. three years ago, I took my husband. Oh, nice! Tell us about it. This yeah. is very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, yeah, like a good experience, and he loved Chechnya so much. Masha. Really, he said like, oh my God, it's uh, it's really calm. I, I s he is. said, I don't know why, but I'm so calm here, you know, it's like really good. Mm -hmm. And I am happy that he liked it. And for me, it was like, I think my, how can I say? Mm, I was really nervous about it. Really, really nervous about it. You were nervous about what exactly? about how I can walk with my Turkish husband outside, in Chechnya yes, and yes. outside and also maybe if I see some mem family members or I don't know people that doesn't like that I am married with him I was really scared you that know, was, was very really risky scared. it was yeah it was really but it was a lot of fun mm -hmm. really it was really good did you have any um, like the stories What's <laughs> happened? How people reacted? How they talked to him? It was like, you know, Berkat? Yes. When we go to Berkat. The <laughs> souk. Yeah. I am still laughing. And we go to one shop, you know. Even if I'm not with him, always the women who are working there, they say, oh, who is this a girl from Europe or something, you know? Yes. And um, when I go with him, I don't know why, but the People were thinking like we are both Arabic, you know, like, ah, okay, oh, who okay. are who do those Arabs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and when I speak Chechen language, they were looking to me like... They shocked. <laughs> yes, and then they tell, tell me like, oh, you are, uh, you are Nochchiyu. I say, yes, I'm from Chechnya. They ask me, are yes. you a Chechen? I say, yes. 
And they say like, ah, and then I sometimes I joke, I say, yes, my father was uh, from, che is from Chechnya, my mother is Turkish. <laughs> and then they were like, ah, 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 okay. You now know. we understand. Now <laughs> we understand why you yeah. have Turkish husband, yeah. I was joking yeah. a lot. But it was, uh, I have a lot of stories. It was really fun. Also like stories like my family members, they make jokes with him. Yeah, you need second wife. We will search <laughs> second wife for you, you know? Why you have one wife, you know? Yeah. They look, and they, they decided say, to make him translate, translate, yeah. translate to him, oh, translate. Okay. I, say to, I say to him, it's good that they, they say, it's good that you have only one wife. <laughs> <laughs> so you translate it as, as it more? The opposite, Yeah, yes. more comfortable for you. Yeah, but uh, it was a lot of fun, yeah. What he likes the most about Chechnya? I think he likes... Is it food? Yes, he <laughs> loves the food too much. Mm. But also, we, we bring him to the barbecue. We have this town, um, like small town barbecue houses town. where you can make the barbecue. Ulice yes. Yes, he went barbecue there street. till now. He's talking to everyone about, about this barbecue. This street. He said, <laughs> I never eat this kind of meat in my life, you know. And he likes also how our people are with the religion, you know, mm. like that they are like really into the religion. And also when you go outside on the streets in Chechnya, that you don't see women. They wear like, how can I say, like two short things. And they do not wear even trousers. Yes. Like uh, that, that you kind always of see things. the dresses, the skirts. Yeah, yeah. he likes a lot uh, about uh, Chechen people. And also how our uh, women treat the men, yeah. you know. Also when we come, we visit my family and then the, the, my little nieces, they clean his shoes. He was like, why? <laughs> why they do this? You yeah. know, these small things, he said, it's not normal. Why? But in the positive way. This is for way, us normal. Yeah. Yeah, this is for us normal. He likes it. How long you stay there? I was two, three weeks there. Two, three weeks. So I see you as a very successful woman. What is your main power? I think my main power is to believe in yourself and to go, you know, even if it's going not that way, like how you want it, just, just believe in yourself, you know. There are, there, are, there are always ups and downs in life, also with business. I see a lot of people who are giving up when something doesn't go like how they want. They give, it, they give up too fast. And yes, I, and I am always like, no, even if it's bad day today, tomorrow, even after tomorrow, I know there will come a day that I will be there where I want to be. I think this is my main power, just believing in myself in what I am doing. You are very famous in social media, as I know. Can you share with us how this has happened? How did you start it? How you became famous? I think famous, it's a big word, but uh, I never saw myself like this, you know, even if people say like, oh, I see you as an influencer, I say, why? You know, I don't see myself like that. I think in the beginning when I was starting with social media, you know, first I was really against social media in my life, always, mm -hmm. even if I had to take picture, I was like, no, I will take it, you know. Uh, but. I worked in Holland. I started working backstage. I worked a lot uh, as a makeup artist. Mm -hmm. And I was also traveling and doing a lot of things, working for the movies or video clips, that kind of stuff. And then uh, in Amsterdam, I started also like um, work as an assistant by a makeup artist school. And a lot of girls were always asking me like, why you don't make um, YouTube tutorials or something like that? And then one day I started with it as a joke and I remember in my second vlog I just filmed my family just a little bit oh these are my kids and I'm eating this and that and from that day you know I saw that people were really interested in like how I live not what I, what I do as a makeup artist but more my private life it started by that so like filming more my private life showing more about myself who I am and and then I saw that people really likes how um, I'm working, you know, I was working always. So they always told me like, uh, I like, you are like, uh, I see you as an influencer, you know, in my life. And I was like, okay, <laughs> till now I don't, sometimes I don't understand like why, you know, but uh, it started as a joke, really. I as never for fun. wanted to become like a blogger or whatever, never in my life. You can see that you started this, your social media influencing work, which you do not call it influencing. Yes. <laughs> from YouTube. Yes. Right? I started from YouTube. So you started to do the vlogs. Yes. Your audience is who exactly? How do you think? Your I audience is the woman or man 
how uh, old they are, uh, from where they are. I from Europe, f- uh, especially from Holland and Belgium. This is what I know. Um, and also a lot of women who wants to work mm-hmm. or to start their own business or who has kids, you know? Yeah. Yes. That so you can we can say that you're inspiring them because you're showing their private life and you're showing yes. how you handle everything. Yes, I, yes, that's what they are telling me. <laughs> that's yeah. why they're calling you influencer. Yes, I because know. Because influencer influencing and inspiring. Yeah. Till now, I, I, I don't know. I'm always like, why, you know? I'm just showing what I am doing and a lot of women are also like thankfully I get so many times messages like because of you I started a business or because of you I'm believing more in myself and that's a good thing I think. I'm this is the amazing something. thing. Yeah. Do you feel now you have a special mission? I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. Sometimes I'm like yes, you know, I feel that and sometimes I'm like, why, you know, why they are following me? I don't understand. I have like, for me, I have a normal life. Mm -hmm. Look, when a Chechen girl is following me or they're like, then I can understand like. By why European when they can do anything without any stopping uh, them. But I'm happy that I have that kind of people who are following me. Yeah. And I can share something, you know. And I'm inspiring them to work or to start their own business. I know that you have this business, which is called Mika. Can you share a bit about it? As I know, this is the luxury tools for the hair. Yes. How did you start it and why you decided even to start it? Really good question, because when I started uh, to show more about my private life, about the products that I'm using and everything, and with the years, you know, I, I had a company in clothing. I was selling clothing clothing because I loved fashion too much. I don't know why my audience, you know, the people who are following following me were always asking me. I had every time the same question. Uh, It was like, what are you using for your hair? Which kind of tools are you using? You know, it was more than what kind of dress do you wearing today, you know? And I was always promoting another brand, another brand. And then one day I woke up and I say, okay, you know, I had really long hair. And I was like, I am missing a curling a curler, you know, that it's also made for a long hair and it's not heavy in your hand because every time I get so tired. And then I was like, okay, you know, I will make that curler. I will put it on the market because this kind of curler we don't have. I have to curl my hair two times to make one curl, you know. And also I was thinking about this is my marketing because I get every day the same questions. What are you using for your hair? What kind of products do you use? You know, and I was like, okay, this is my marketing. I have to do something with it. And also I love to do something with the hair, you know, and to use like really good hair products. So I saw it uh, as a good marketing for myself and I started with this curler. Like yeah. exactly how I want it, like <laughs> long, light, uh, like light in the hand and also the branding. The branding, it's really important for me. Yeah, Till now I true. say always like this is like the number one thing by us. So you can say like your personal brand, which you already build it, built, you, uh, that helps you to sell the product that you created, right? Yes. Yes. Even uh, with everything that you telling me about that you don't know why you influence them, yeah. why you don't know why people are <laughs> following you, all of this. And uh, what I saw in you now, what you're saying is that you actually have entrepreneurship in your blood. <laughs> because <laughs> you, without the knowledge of the business, because you didn't know about the social media, how it works, you, as you said, you started for fun. Yeah. You actually created a successful brand. Yeah. And you really smart understood the audience and what they need. And I think also because I was working for a big company, makeup studio, I think they had even here one shop in uh, Emirates Mall. It's from Holland. I work for this brand and I saw a lot of things also backstage. And I think Mm -hmm. it's also experience. You know, I always said to myself, I will be my own, um, how can I say? Boss. Boss. You know, (laughs) I don't want to work for someone else. I was always like this since I was young. Why? I think because of my mother. Mm. My mother had like 
a lot of things in her in her life. She mm -hmm. was working always, you know. And I grew up with my mother. I was always alone with my mother. Yeah. So I think I have this from her for sure. I everyone say you are like your mother, exactly like. Your Did mother. your mother uh, made the business? Yeah, she, she had businesses in Chechnya. Yeah. Till now she's working, and I think I I was always like you know. I don't need a man yeah. <laughs> to fix something. <laughs> Maybe it's bad, but uh, yeah. Nowadays, uh, we can really say, yeah, for sure we need a man, for sure. Of course. But what I'm saying is that, yeah, to build a business, to build yourself, to yeah, have that. a personal brand, yes. we don't need anyone. Yes, that's yeah. what I, I Because this meaning. is, as I said, you have it in your blood. Yeah. And you are very strong, powerful. Even if you look very sweet, lovely, <laughs> like uh, petite. <laughs> you are very strong. When you were starting Mika, did you have any fears? Yes and no. Yes, because it was like new brand, you know. It was like new, new, new. No, no one knew it. So I was like just a little bit afraid of uh, what people will think. And then I have the other side in myself. I think, you know, I know that I will launch something good. I know that I will make a lot of women happy with it. If I am happy with it, I know for sure that also other people will happy with it yes and no it was like i was just a little bit excited because it was something new on the market but i always thought you know i will be there where i want to be one day i know that i will do this i am like manifesting manifesting <laughs> too much yes. in my life yeah. yeah but this is good uh, because in any product that you're creating uh, i mean physically product or something on the media it has to be like you're sure about it because yes. if you by yourself still have adopts, your audience will also yeah. not to get it. Yeah. Uh, can you name Mika brand and Mika business successful like by yourself? Do you feel it's successful or still yeah. maybe there is some level which you still want to reach? Yes, there is for sure some level that I want to reach that's like to go more international. That's what I al always wanted, and I want to be one day in Sephora. I always say, I want Sephora. To, yes, I want to be there, you know, with my brand. So this is like the dream that, and I think when I am in Sephora, then I can say like I did it. Yeah, but I think it's not a big problem for you now. Yes, I think also uh, we have to start with the process. But this is what I always said from the beginning. I always said, when I am in Sephora International, yeah. then I am there. You so know? your goal is to be on Sephora. Yes. So you are investing, right? Yes, this is like my second hobby. <laughs> yeah. So Can I you share with us more about your investing? Investing, uh, it's more in Holland, you know. I uh, bought maybe, it was around three years ago, uh, I bought like a um, business, uh, wait one second, business company. No, it's not company. It's like a building where you can office. Like office a, building. Yes. Uh, three years ago, I bought uh, like a office. They built it like new, you know, new, new. It doesn't have rooms. It had nothing. So uh -huh. You mean the building of the yes, offices? Yes, the building uh -huh. of the offices. In Holland. In yeah. Holland. I bought it mm -hmm. by myself with the money from the company. You bought an off plan. Yes. So it's still building. No, 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 no. It's ready. I bought it like it was finished. Ah, so I okay. can go directly in. So handover, you know. Yeah, handover. Yeah, handover. And I make there more rooms inside, mm -hmm. I build a toilet, like a kitchen, everything. And yeah. then I give it for rent. No, I stayed first one year inside with my company, but uh -huh. it was too big for my company. Yeah. I mean, too much space, you know. And when I moved to Turkey, I give it for rent. And now just one month ago or yes, one month ago, I sold, I sell it. Ah, you sold it? Yes, okay. I sold it. And now I will put the money again in a new company like a business company mm -hmm. on the, the on this building that you sold it on the offices uh how many x's you made uh, x2 x3 x10 uh, when i sold it i make around 160,000 euro more more okay yes and for rent it was yeah, in, in Holland, it's like a normal rent price. Monthly, it was uh, 1,800 euro. And I mm -hmm. rent, I give it for rent for two years. Mm -hmm. So it was like... So it's paid you back for the three years, you said, right? Or two years? Yeah, it paid me a lot of back. Mm. Oh, yeah, okay. Much more than I uh, invest okay. in the beginning. Yeah. That's amazing. This is... Um, 
the thing that I didn't know about you that you're investing because uh, yeah everyone is investing yeah. but uh, now you give some new ideas for the ladies to share how to do that yeah so the money that it, about the salary to come back to your question yes I I I don't take it to buy more bags or mm -hmm. more to live more like good life. Yeah. No, I don't need it. You know, I'm okay with my life and I want to invest more. This is smart. Yeah. Where exactly in which platforms you selling your product? As you said, you don't have it offline, right? You have it only online. Yes, so people I have are buying it, it only online. Only the web shop and now a lot of um, hairdressers, you know, mm -hmm. hair companies mm -hmm. are asking for our products to to put a stand, you know, like ah, with okay. our products in their in their uh, beauty salon. Yeah, beauty salon. But it's like to go and B two B, you know. But yeah. I said like this is not what I want mm -hmm. maybe yes maybe no we are thinking about it so you don't make franchising or not dealerships yet. we have mm -hmm. a lot of questions for franchising like in more than one year and everyone in my team say oh my god you are so stupid with this you have to do it everyone who is coming in, in into my uh, company to work they say why like Malika why I say no I don't want I want to be only exclusive you know only like the online web shop but maybe I will go for it maybe I don't know yeah I think you should uh, as I see it yes. uh, as expert you should try because uh, you can give exclusivity to some some few special people few special companies for the country and that's it first it's gonna make uh, you uh, sell faster and it's gonna m make you feel like it's going easy you know but um, I want to ask you uh, since already everyone in Europe knows about the Mika, the brand, uh, how do you promote it? We use a lot of advertising. Mm -hmm. That's really important, I think, now in this time. So we put a lot of money in the With the influencers? Uh, no, also with the, like Google ads, you know. Ah, like okay, the advertisement, kind of thing, yes, advertisement, digital marketing, yes. yeah. We put a lot of money in this. And also we work, uh, of course, also with uh, influencers. Mm -hmm. We have uh, paid influencers. We have... Uh, ambassadors. Yes, ambassadors. So that uh, kind of... And also sometimes I'm promoting it by myself also. Yes, yeah, so again, as I said from the uh, beginning of our conversation, your personal brand is help you to sell, right? Yes. What's uh, the unique things you can uh, say us about your product? Except, uh, as I heard, it's for the... A long hair, very long hair, it's light in your hand, it's easier to use. What else? We are uh, fully vegan, cruelty fully free, vegan. Okay. Um, certificated also by PETA, and also we are halal. So all the products, I think this is also like silicone free. Yeah, so you free. have also the certificate of halal. Is it important for woman to start her own business, to become entrepreneur or to be employee? I'm not like asking between these two. I'm asking, is it important nowadays to start something? I think it's not important to start something, just to start something. You know, if you are like a woman and you have dreams and you want to be your own boss and you're happy with it, just start. Don't wait, don't waste your time. Don't listen to people around you, just do it. But if you are a woman who is like, I don't want to be my own boss. You know, you, I, I know a lot of girls, they are okay with, they are really happy with what yes, they are doing and they are true. working for someone else. And I am like, if this is what makes you happy, just do this, you know. But if you are a woman who believes in some kind of dreams, you have dreams, I think you have to start, you know. I see a lot of women wants to start a business. But they have fears, yeah. But they have too much fears, I don't know why. And sometimes I want to take that fear out of them, you know, but yeah. it's not that easily. What kind of fears usually you see? That they are afraid that it will not go like how they want it to go. Or that they put money inside, but they will not return the money. Yeah, you know? they're going to lose. Yes. Did you have these fears? No, at all. I don't had this. You know, I started with 2000 euro. So for me, it was if I lose this 2000 euro, it's okay. I don't care, you know, but if I will s start like with 30,000 or 20 or 15,000, yeah. I think I will have that fear. But when I started, I was like, OK, I have I started with 2000 euro and I was like, OK, if I will lose it, 
but of course now I'm talking about more a bigger amount and I'm like no I just believe in myself I don't know why uh, what's the next plans for your brand if I will move to Dubai I want to move my company also to Dubai and also to sell here you mean in whole UAE yes do you want to catch the whole uh, Khaliji to I mean like uh, the Gulf countries Saudi Arabia Qatar Kuwait yes I think yeah for sure what is the next goals for yourself as a brand uh, I have to be more uh, active online to mm-hmm. post more and yeah. now I have also like an agency where I'm sitting and yeah the guy who is doing my things you know all the work and everything he said to me every time like you have to be more active online I think I have to do it. <laughs> yeah. So you're working with some marketing agency, right? Mm, or you're working with some marketeer by yourself? Yes, he's like like a manager, you know. Mm-hmm. He gave me like, uh, th- he said to me like, oh, this brand wants to work with you. This is the amount that you will get. Uh, is it okay for you? Like mm-hmm. this kind of thing. The man- you know? yeah, yeah, advertising like a manager. manager. Yeah. Is uh, he from Europe? Yes. Okay. Yes, he's from Belgium. But they open now the agency in uh, Dubai because they have a lot of influencers uh, from Dubai also. Yeah, also a lot of influencers move to Dubai. Yes, you're <laughs> right. What does inspire you to mm. keep going, to keep working, to... I think my mother, for sure. And also like my kids and my husband, for sure. Like my family, you know, they inspire me the most. My kids. My two boys, yeah. What's advice you would you like to give for the young generation girls? If they want to do something, no matter what, in their life, and it's like something good for yourself, just be yourself and just go for it. You know, fearless. I know that a lot of people has too much fears and that's why they are like sitting with years in the same place yeah i will i will say just be yourself and to go and chase your dreams uh, malika so the whole uh, our conversation we talking about do not fear do not scared i want to ask you what exactly helped to you what is still helping you to not have these fears it's also ex- experience in your life of course the things that happen to you but the most important thing is um, you know that I am a person I now I am 32 years old still I am thinking how can I become a better version of myself how can I learn uh, more about life more about chasing dreams or more about so I think it's really important that to read, yeah, reading books. I love to read books. I love to watch uh, documentaries, you know, that are learning me about life. And also, I ha- sometimes I look to someone and I think, oh, how they become so far in their life, you know? And yes, I'm learning. Every day I try to learn about people, about how how they started the business, how they, how they become so successful in their life. And it's not like, oh, I'm, I go to my office, I work, I come home and I'm sitting doing all day nothing. I am, even if I'm in my bed, I am trying to learn something, you know? So I think it's really important for people to try to learn every day more and more. And I think the most important thing, that's how I see it, I don't want to hang with people who are not learning me things you know I don't like to be around people like a lot of times in a week that are not learning me things so it's really bad to say it but if I meet someone and I think okay if I hang out with you too much I become like more Dumber, I don't know. <laughs> Dumber. <how to laughs> yes. Dumber, yes, you can say yes, like that. I don't want to hang out. So I can so say much. that you're taking care of your surroundings. Yes, too much. But I think this is uh, very normal for yeah. the um, business-focused people, yes. for the people who's taking care about their mindset. This is very normal. I do the same. And uh, this is a lot of uh, famous people said, like, if you want to be 
uh, a billionaire find the five people sit the same table with yes. them who's already billionaire you're gonna be the sixth one so yeah this is yes, how it if works. you're hanging out with someone who is doing nothing in their life and it's like has too much fears you will yeah. take it over this energy you yeah. know what I mean so it's negative energy yes, it's negative. negative energy so it's really important to know who you spend your time with you know yes that's true I totally agree with yes. you and I think this is another one um, suggestion and advice we can give for the people, yes, especially sure. young generation, because um, again, if you are in this kind of society who's keeping you very low, do not allow you to fly away or do something, you're gonna still be there. Yes. So to, ke- yes. to take care of your surroundings, this is, yes. I think, number one for anyone, not only for the business people. Yes, and also when you come home, just ask yourself, like, what did I learn today? Yeah. You know? What did I learn today? What kind of books you read usually? I read a lot of mindset, change your mindset mm-hmm. uh, about business, about manifesting, also a lot of books. Can you name some books which you liked a lot? Yes. Um, I read a lot of Dutch books, books, I mean, but if I have to choose English, then it will be my favorite manifest, Mm -hmm. Uh, Seven Steps to Change Your Mindset, and it's from Roxy Nafusi. I am reading a lot of books because, um, you know, I am traveling a lot, so I am a lot of times in the airplane, but I am really, really scared for the airplanes. Really? I think my biggest fear. I say I don't have fears every time, but yeah. if I have to fly... Now we found out your fear. Yes, if I have to take a flight, oh my God, I can't sleep two days before or one day before I take my flight because I'm too scared. I don't know why. Since I became mother, uh-huh. since then I have this problem. I am so scared that I will let my kids like without Aww. me or something, you know? Yeah. But I know a lot of mothers that they have the same problem. <laughs> so I am not the only one. So it's the part of motherhood. Yeah, motherhood. that's why I, in the airplane I read a lot of times uh, mm-hmm. books. We have some uh, special part of my podcast where I'm asking my followers in Instagram to ask the question from my guest. So the first question for you, which followers ask, is how to be confidence in yourself yeah how can i answer this i think i will start again with just believe in yourself and just believe in the things that you do you know don't look too much to another to other people and don't want to be the same don't compare yourself yes don't compare yourself with others really this is so important yes and i think as a woman it's really hard to say this it's not easy to do that but it's uh, most of the important thing how often uh, you see the hate to you and how you handle it? I think we had already this question. You know, when it's only about myself or about how I look or about what I am wearing, I don't care really. I, am, I really don't care. But when it becomes to my family, like my kids or how I am as a mother, that I am traveling too much without my kids or that I have an au pair at home, you know, yeah. This kind of things hurt me a lot, Uh, but I think the people who are hating online, those are the people that are really not happy with themselves. No, I don't have time to go online and to write on their woman or a man or whatever. Like the comment, the comment. I don't really don't have time for that. And even if I have time, I don't do that. You know, I don't care. So I am always telling myself these kind of people are people that are really unhappy. So, and I think, yeah, you do something good if you have these kind of things, I think. I believe in that. The third question, what do you do when um, people hurt you? And uh, how often this happened to you that you became disappointed in people? I had this a lot of times in my life. You know, I was really soft, Mm -hmm. if I look back to my life. I was really soft and I accept a lot of things that people did to me. But now, in these days, I think I'm really hard with people. If I have to lose you because you are not good for me, I don't care anymore. I don't care about losing people in my life anymore. You know, I'm, I'm not heartless, but... I think I have 
so many disappointed moments in my life that I am now like, it's okay if I will lose everyone. If I'm happy, my family is happy, I'm okay with that. So, and I am thankful, you know, that I had this kind of experience. Because now at my age, 32, I'm really strong, I think, with people around me. It's better than when I am 20 years later, you know. Malika, thank you so much for being my first guest. I'm, I really loved everything you said. I enjoyed it a lot. I hope you too. Yes, for sure. Thank you for having me today. And I'm glad that we did this together. Yeah. So we have a small gift for you. Don't have to do this. You're welcome. The flowers are beautiful the same as you. Thank you.